Hello, my name is Adrian Lasala, and I am going to talk about some of the things that I see as trends in communication for Dr. Flamia's tech communication class. So this is completely extemporaneous. You'll have to forgive me as it probably will meander all over the place. But I want to start with the role of the tech communicator. The technical communicator really is taking information and helping others who maybe aren't as close to the information, aren't as technically involved with the information, and helping them dissect it, understand it, make use of it. And that role will only continue to grow in importance as the world becomes more and more technical. And in fact, the thing about it is that communication is at the core of everything we do. No matter what we create, we need to tell others about it. We need to tell others how to use it. We need to report back to the people who created it. And all of that requires somebody who is good at communicating, good at boiling a message down to its core essence. So uh, let me give you a statistic. So more data has been created in the past two years than in the entire previous history of the human race. That is mind blowing. We are creating information at an incredible rate and at an incredible pace. And technical communicators can help people take advantage of and understand that communication, that information. So in the old view of sort of technical communication, when I was at UCF, we were really focused heavily on documentation. And documentation certainly can still play a big role. But documentation is not by any means everything that there is about technical communication. And what was traditionally documentation, what we thought of as books and binders and physical things is changing too. It used to involve a lot of words, a lot of details, a lot of steps, and that is evolving also. Because information used to live in these books. This was how you got it. But information doesn't live in books anymore. It lives in the internet, it lives in the web, it lives on the other side of a search box. And so what people need to know is different too. They don't need to know everything about a specific procedure. They need to know where the information about that procedure is so that when they're going to do it, they can look it up. So really a lot of it focuses more on awareness of information and how to get to the information when you need it than on actually acquiring knowledge in the same way as we used to before. Now, I'm in a large software company, and I have been focusing on education throughout my career, customer education. And so a lot of my focus has been on helping people understand how to acquire that information, how to acquire that knowledge. And I'm seeing this trend of uh, information change um, that I think applies here, too. So video is playing a much, much bigger role because it's easier to create video, because it's easier to upload and share video, and because we naturally actually can absorb information visually at a much faster rate than we can read it. Um, video can be used to help explain steps, help explain procedures. I mean, how many of you have had some sort of problem where you know, you've got a broken toilet or something, sink, whatever, and you look it up on YouTube to find out how to fix the thing? So because of that, the other thing that I think the technical communicator needs to do is understand some more about visual communication as well. Um, the pace of change means that we don't have time to necessarily write a bunch of information down, run it through a review process, and have it done, and have it edited and, and then published. We need instead to be able to get information out quickly. And because of that, informal learning has been playing a bigger, bigger role in education as well where the information in the subject matter's head is subject matter experts head is so important that it's more important to get it recorded and down and shared than it is to get it polished now different types of communication require different types of level of polish too if you bought something from a large company you'd expect a certain level of quality to the information that's coming and uh, and if it was all informal you wouldn't want to use that but the or you wouldn't necessarily trust it but i really think that there's a balance here that there's the the formal information and the informal information that's coming from a community or from users and both of those things play uh, a part hand in hand in helping people understand something now the other thing that i wanted to mention 
is that even the sense of um, information distribution is changing. So I mentioned that long ago, oh so long ago, uh, we used to use a lot of books for things. You used to buy software and it came in a big box and it came in a box with a book. And the book is actually the heavy thing that was shipped with it. The software came on a floppy disk or a CD or later a DVD and those things were tiny. Now you just download the software. You don't even need the, the, uh, the distribution of the box anymore. Well, in the same way that that information is being embedded more and more in software, more and more in apps and in solutions that you might buy. Even physical products have usually an app or some sort of digital element to them. Um, the Internet of Things is changing the way that information is collected, used, and distributed as well. So if you're not familiar with the Internet of Things, my company, not my company, but the company I work for, uh, it's spending a lot of effort in this space. And it's the idea that everyday things can communicate across the internet directly. And then something on the back end can make sense of all that information so that people can take advantage of it. So let's walk through a scenario and, and tie that back to how um, a technical communicator fits in. So let's say that you have a big air conditioning unit outside of your house. And you have this from a company say carrier um, now in the age of the internet of things carrier could have that be smart and connected and on the internet so let's say that that is reporting back to carrier about its performance and carrier can get this from across the entire country across the entire world about every air conditioner that's out there and how it's performing that might actually change the way they design their product maybe they're designing for environments that don't actually exist maybe they realize they need to do something special for units in Florida versus units in New England. They can get that by aggregating all of this data. But the other thing they can do is they can start to see trends about performance that influence their understanding of, of how uh, you know to service the product. So let's say that that unit, that air conditioning unit, has a vibration in it, which they've seen in a bunch of other units across the country. And based on that vibration, they know that it's got about two weeks until a certain part goes bad. So they can now actually proactively reach out to the homeowner and say, hey, we think that your air conditioner is about to go bad and you don't want to be without AC during the summer here in Florida. We can send a tech out. Well, that tech can come out with the right parts on the truck because he knows that the, uh, you know, what's wrong with it before he even gets there. But if he hasn't actually worked on this before, imagine that tech opening up an iPad and using augmented reality to sort of peer virtually into that unit. So he holds it up in front of the air conditioner. It superimposes the parts in front of it. He sees information about how to disassemble those parts, video animation or just an animation that's superimposed over it, and then how to reassemble it with the part which he's brought with them on the truck. That is where communication again fits in right now it's a visual communication as a totally different kind of communication than what I was exploring when I was going through the program but um, there can be information superimposed over real-world devices and this is not science fiction where a company is actually working to make this kind of stuff a reality the the discipline is called performance support which is really helping people in the work stream while they're trying to do something but doing it through augmented reality is still very much new stuff which most people aren't doing today but fast forward 10 years and it may not be so uncommon so there are tremendous trends about information and how people consume information and the fact that people are going to more and more rely on deeper levels of information not in their head or not you know, on their person, but that they can access at the time that they need it. That domain is called performance support, as I said, and I really see um, a lot of things pulling that together from the Internet of Things to augmented reality to maybe even virtual reality. There's a lot of things that are changing the way that we communicate today. Video is taking that role, and I think it's only going to evolve and change further as we go forward. So the great thing about all of this is that at the center of all of it is communication and the technical communicator. No matter what cool creative thing we come up with, no matter whether all of it is assembled with robots one day, we still need to communicate to people about how to use it so you'll always have a role to play. Those are some of the trends that I'm seeing and 
that's that.